So today I'm going to show you how to disable any input device with the use of X input. And the example that I'm going to be using is with my touchpad. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So you might be wondering why you might want to disable an input device. So I'm going to be disabling my touchpad and the reason that I want to do that, or at least temporarily disable it. So when I'm working with Vim for example or other terminal applications, I'll occasionally bump my touchpad and I might click or I might move the cursor around and that's a bit annoying, especially when I do click on something that ends up maybe taking me to another window or just something a little annoying like that. And another use for this is, for example, you have a webcam in your laptop, or maybe you've got a webcam plugged into your computer and it's a business situation for whatever reason, you can't actually unplug it. Since you can't unplug it, you still have the ability to disable it in software. And if you're someone who really cares about your privacy, you might want to do that. So you could also disable your webcam through that means or any other number of devices that you might want to disable. Now, there is one point I do want to get out of the way. You can basically freeze up your computer by doing this. Not really freezing it, but will put yourself in a situation where it's effectively frozen. So don't do something dumb, like disable your keyboard, for example, unless you have a second keyboard laying around. Because if you do that, the only way you're going to be able to fix that is by restarting your computer, unless you have some way to open up a virtual keyboard with your mouse. But if you're on Arch, then you don't. and it's just don't don't disable your keyboard very bad idea okay so we'll go over to my main screen now so what you're going to want to install is a program called x input so on arch you can install that with pacman it is in the package called xorg x input x input i can spell it properly sweet okay it's a very small package you might have it installed if you're on other distros but on arch you're not going to have it and it's a very cool program. You can do a lot of input manipulation with this, but we're just going to be doing something very, very basic with it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is find out what the either the name or the ID of our device is. And the way we do this is very simple. So we run X input with the list option. And that will list out all of our devices. Okay, so I've got the master pointer here and the master keyboard. All of the for some reason, I don't know why, but things like your microphone and your webcam are slaves to the keyboard. I don't know what the actual reason for this is. I just thought it was kind of funny. And then all of the things that control your pointer are under the control of the master pointer. So I've got the mouse in here, which I don't actually have a mouse plugged in. I think it just loads that up with lib input or something. I'm not sure. But the one we're going to be dealing with is the touchpad. So I also have other things in here, like obviously my keyboard. Do not do anything dumb with this. But we also have other things in here, like the video bus for both of my webcams. So I've got my built-in webcam, which you're not seeing right now. That's behind my, uh, my Logitech, what's it called, C920? Yeah. So I've got two video buses, the one for the C920 and the one for the other one, the built-in one. And there's also my power button and a sleep button. I don't know what my sleep button is because it's not clearly labeled. I might have to look into that, but for this video, it's not too important. What we want here is the ID of the program that we're going to use. Obviously, we could use the full name and you're perfectly free to do that, but the ID is much shorter and you might as well just use the ID. But there is one thing you do have to keep in mind. These IDs can and will change. I don't know about the names, so it might be a better idea to use the name in reality. You can use either, just remember that the IDs can and will change depending on the order the devices are loaded up and the order you actually plug stuff in if you're gonna unplug stuff. Okay, so now that we know the ID is, the ID of my touchpad is 14. What we're going to do now is very, very simple. So we want to, if we actually look at the props of that device. So if we go X input dash dash list dash props. So most of the props for the input devices will be different, but there is one consistent prop for all of them. And I didn't put the ID in for it. So it's X input dash dash list props dash props and then the ID or the name. Okay, that was the wrong device. 
11 is the idea that it used to be. Sorry, it's 14 that I want now. Okay, so the thing that we want is this device enabled in here. So now that we know what that is called, we can use the ID for it or the name for it. Once again, I think the IDs might change. I'm not 100% sure. I think I've seen one change before. Yes, okay, so I'm using Excel speed for something else. So also remember the IDs can change. I don't know about the names. The names might change with driver updates or stuff like that. So you're probably best to check what the names are before you use them. But if you're just running a simple command, then you can use either of them. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to be using the set prop command. So I don't remember if it's dash dash or dash. So x input and it is dash dash set it is, let's see, yes, okay, dash, dash. Okay, so what we have to do now is very simple. So now that we know the ID and we know the thing we want to change, we just have to use this dash, dash, set prop option to actually change the value. So dash, da or x input, dash, dash, set, dash, prop, then the ID or the name of the thing we want to change, we're gonna use the ID for now. So the ID we have to use is 14. It's going to be different for the device that you want to enable or disable. So use whatever ID or name it is for that one. And then what we want to change, and we're gonna use the name for this one. So if we go device enabled, and then the value that we want to set this to. So if we see in here, it's set to one right now. So one means on and one means true. So what you want to change it to is you wanna change it to zero. So zero will disable it. So if we run that now, then as we can see, my cursor is moving around right now. If we run that, now I cannot move my cursor anymore. So to re-enable it, it's very, very simple. It's just the exact opposite of what we just did. We just changed this value back to one. And now my cursor is actually able to move again. So as I said before, don't disable your keyboard unless you're messing with someone. If you're doing that, like say you wanna have maybe a timer and every couple of seconds it enables and disables their keyboard, that's not a bad idea. I might have to do that to someone later in the year. So <laughs> I'm never actually running this directly because I want to just bind it to a key so I can easily toggle on and off my trackpad when I want to. So I've got that bound to F7. So if I press F7 now, you'll notice a little notification pop up saying my touchpad has been disabled. If we press F7 again, now I can move it again. Okay, so this is a very simple script. It's using a couple of grips and some other stuff and we'll go over that because I want to pad out the rest of this video. Okay, so the script is called toggle, I think it's called toggle touch, yes, okay. So we bring that open. Cool, so the first thing that we're doing in here is we are taking that X input list and grepping out the ID of the device. Okay, very simple. The next thing that we are doing is we're using that ID. I'm not gonna step through everything because you can see what it is on the screen and I'll put this up on my GitHub. So if you wanna step through it slowly by yourself, go right ahead. But if I go through it as slow as I wanted to, it would probably be like a 20 or 30 minute video. So. I'll just assume you have some knowledge of what these commands actually do. So we echo the ID into xargs, which will drop it into x input. So we're using that ID from up here to get the list of props for that value. Then we are getting the row that says device enabled and we're getting the value of that row. So if it's valued at zero, then status will be zero. If it's valued at one, the status will be one. So in here, it's just a very, very simple if statement. We take the status, if it's equal to one, then we disable the device. If it's equal to zero, we enable the device and we actually use a notification to visually say what state it's actually in. So this isn't the case for all laptops, but mine actually has hardware disable buttons for my touchpad. And if it has that, you really don't actually need to do this. You can just use your hardware disable buttons. The reason I wanted to do this anyway is because I wanted to have some visual feedback that my touchpad was actually disabled. Because when I just press that button, which is bound to function F7, it doesn't tell me that my trackpad's actually disabled. It just disables it and that's all. But with this method, I actually get a little notification saying that, oh, your trackpad's not gonna work. So don't try to use it or, or you're gonna, think that it's broken or something like I actually did this morning. Yeah, I accidentally pressed that button. Then I went and bought a mouse because I thought my trackpad was broken. 
Turns out it wasn't broken. I had just disabled it at the hardware level. So within X input, it still thought that it was enabled and I could disable it and enable it and that was working just fine. But in reality, I couldn't actually do anything to it without actually pressing function F7 again. So my other reason for wanting to have this script to enable and disable my trackpad is that, so when I move away from my current laptop, which is a Swift 3, I know it's just a random thing I bought a couple of years ago, to maybe something like a ThinkPad or just anything else, it might not have those same hardware disables. So I want to still be able to disable my trackpad even though I don't have those hardware buttons. And I might want to disable some other stuff, like maybe when I move to a desktop, I would want to disable my mouse or something like that. So that doesn't get in the way, even though that's kind of out of the way. So it's not as much of a challenge to actually work with. I might still want to have the option to disable it just for whatever reason. Like, as I said, maybe I'm doing a lot of stuff in Vim and I just don't want to have that mouse as a distraction. If I know it's disabled, then I'm not going to try to use it. And yeah, I guess that's, probably the best reason for it. I tend to get distracted when I know that there's an option to get distracted. So if I disable it, then I've got to go through an extra step to actually distract myself. Probably the best way to describe that. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see other videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding a little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated, but I'm actually flying towards 250 and I might hit it before the end of the year. So if I could do that, that would be absolutely amazing. If you've got any other ideas for things you want me to cover, random little tutorials like this, let me know in the comments or let me know on my Discord and that link will be down below, so go check that out. If you wanna see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, you can check out my library. I upload all of my stuff there, it gets synced over daily, so Anything you want to see from me will be available over there. And down below, I've also got my support links and my Twitter and my Macedon. So if you want to support the channel or you want to see video updates, go check those out. And up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And I think that's pretty much everything now. So I'm out.